Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do a half and half white and black canvas today. It's going to be fantastic. So I'm taking our Bob Ross liquid white. Looks a whole lot like this. And I'm going to cover the white section of the canvas. And then we're going to add our clear. So don't need a whole lot. I usually shake up the jar. Whatever lands in the top of the jar, that's what we use for our white section of our canvas. Especially when we don't have a big, very big white section, right? Nice little small little sky. So problem with skies like this is they like to grow a lot, right? When we use our colors, they like to spread. So we gotta be careful. And uh, depending on our pressure and our paint and practice, right? All the three P's of paint with Josh. Now we're gonna get our uh, liquid clear and we're gonna cover the black section of our canvas in liquid clear. Now we're gonna be adding our clear to our canvas, but only in a few little places, right? And that way we can spread it around. We don't have to work from one area that's very thick and try to spread it across our canvas. So I like to drop it in a few little areas and don't worry, you're gonna add too much, right? Every time we add too much. And then we're gonna take a paper towel and we're gonna wipe it away. So don't worry about it, don't stress. You don't wanna have a giant glob or big drips running down the canvas, right? But no matter how many times we do it, we always add too much clear. So we gotta take that paper towel and we gotta wipe it off, right? So once we know our entire thing is nice and blacked out and covered, you can even see it changes a different color. So we'll take our paper towels right over here. I like the Viva brand, those real soft ones. Oh, they're lovely, just fantastic. I found some of the other brands kind of leave chunks and little bits on our canvas. All right, so we're gonna wipe our clear area first, just like that. Bam, get all that clear excess paint off of the canvas, right? You don't need it all. The canvas still remains very wet. You don't need all that excess in there. So, I'll tell you what we've done so far. We've taken our Bob Ross Liquid Clear, looks a whole lot like this, covered our entire black section of the canvas, took Bob Ross Liquid White, which is its counterpart, right? Covered the entire white section of the canvas. And now we're ready to go through all of our colors and show you how to paint just a cool little seascape right on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. And all we did initially was we took a little bit of our acrylic black gesso, it's just acrylic black paint, covered the entire section of black where we wanted it, let that sucker dry off all the way, because you don't want it to be wet and then mix it with our oils, right? They don't mix together. Now we're gonna take a little of our, of our blue, gonna come in here, gonna lay the under colors down for our seascape. Where do you wanna have your seascape be blue? Where do you wanna have your water change color? Right, I wanna have my little bit of blue back there, Maybe we'll have this gorgeous like red face of the wave. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic, right? Leaving a little, what do we call it? A dark separator in between those two colors. A little section of black in there, right? I'm gonna go back to the blue. We're doing this with a limited number of colors as well. We'll put our blue back in here. And as the blue mixes with that crimson on the brush and on the canvas, it's gonna turn it into this gorgeous purpley color. Oh my goodness. Just gonna be fantastic. So we're gonna go back and forth mixing it. Maybe we'll have this purple sandy beach down here. Because again, we only have a few colors, right? We can only do with what we have on the palette today. And these colors are left over from last night's painting, which is right down here. It turned out fantastic last night. So if you missed it, both of these are available for sale. You can find them in my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And they're available at 40% off worldwide shipping. So no matter where you are in the world, if Etsy lets you purchase it, then we're gonna have an awesome time sending it to you because I print out the labels straight through Etsy. So, now that we have all of our black section of our canvas covered in our just Prussian blue and alizarin crimson, I'm gonna wash the brush off. We're gonna start with a fresh brush. So, while I'm washing the brush, you guys tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, and we're just gonna have a wicked awesome time. It's gonna be fantastic. Just a whole lot of fun. So, if you're ready to have some fun, Make sure you're double tapping on that screen and you're gonna be able to watch this video as a tutorial next Wednesday, not tomorrow, because this video is for tomorrow. And then this video is gonna be for next week. So if you missed it or you missed the beginning, you didn't see how we prepped or if you have to leave halfway through, then uh, you'll be able to watch it over on my YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash paint with Josh, right? Paint with Josh, paint with Josh, paint with Josh. So tell me where you're watching from guys. Let me, let me check the comments back here. Australia, Arizona, Ham Sammy's, Grilled Cheeses in the comments. Excellent. Lots of places. Look at this. All the follows. You guys are cool. Arizona again. I got a lot of Arizona fans. New Zealand. Another Arizona. Colorado. Colorado. California. Man, you guys missed out. All right. Now we're going to come up here. I'm going to take a little of that crimson color, right? Just like that. A little of my red over here, because why not? 
just gonna grab a little smidge of both on the brush, and that way we have this multitude of colors, right? And who knows, maybe we'll come in from up here, just we'll check it. Maybe we'll drop it in along the side. I wanna leave a good amount of white area in here so we can have a big puffy red cloud. All right, a little bit more of the straight up crimson, less of the, of the actual red, right? More crimsony color, leaving dark areas, leaving light areas. Let's go a little bit more crimson from this side. And then we're gonna drop in, look at it change already, just awesome. The more blue we put in here, the more purple it's gonna go. And just with our limited amount of colors, we're gonna be able to make the most gorgeous little scene and sky that you've ever seen, for sure, right? Take this guy, mixing our blue around the edges, just having it swipe, and then we'll go back and we'll blend it all out and it'll be fantastic, right? So, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? If you're just tuning in, we'd love to know what you guys are eating. All right? what's the last thing you just ate? That's a good question too. Just like that, that's all we really need to do. I swear on my life, right? We're gonna cover the edges, just in case it gets purchased, and that way, the buyer doesn't have to go buy an expensive frame. If you do wanna frame it, you can get a nice little 16 by 20 frame at Michael's. They're like 28 bucks. Uh, you can just buy a picture frame, pop out that glass front and use that. That's what I do. That's exactly what I do. I don't go get the really expensive frames. That seems like a waste to me. So let's wash this old brush out. And we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna make the most gorgeous giant wave, just a crashing wave. I can already hear it. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. So send it to your grandma, send it to your friends, send it to your grandkids. If you're a grandma that's watching, send it over to your grandkids. They're gonna love me. They really are. We're gonna take a, a nice clean two inch brush. I haven't used this one at all, right? I wish you could do it like the drummers. <laughs> right? We'll come up here like that. Take this guy just into the lightest area so we don't really do anything. We're taking some of that white, pulling it out, taking some of the pink and pulling it in based on our what, right? What is, what is our first P? We have three P's of paint with Josh. And they're not on this shirt. They're on my other shirt. But what are the three P's of paint with Josh? Give me the first P. Anybody? Anybody have the first P? It's vital. G and S farms. That's right. The amount of paint on the brush, right, is our first P. And in this instance, we had zero paint on the brush. It's just what's up here on the canvas. So depending on our second P, right, we can take all of this color and cover up all that white area and have it disappear. So what's the second P? Does anybody know the second P? We'll come back and look here. Anybody know? First one to say it. Peanut butter. Pressure, Z Squad 246 was the first person I see, or I saw anyway, that said the second P of paint with Josh, and that's pressure, right? And as we all know, with the amount of pressure, we can really pull all that color and cover this white area if we wanted to, and really get rid of it. With our amount of pressure, we can blend all of these little things out, right? You can blend those little swipes gone, blend it to a different color, right? All based on our pressure. And what is the final P of paint with Josh, guys? It's almost the most important P, because without this P, I mean, what do you expect, right? So give me the final P, the last of the P's. <laughs> what is I saw it right as I came around. M.S. Gotho. So Miss Gotho, you're gonna get a follow from Paint with Josh. I keep forgetting to follow people. So you're gonna get a follow from Paint, for jo Paint with Josh for knowing the third P of Paint with Josh. And that's practice, right? Without practice, then what are we all gonna do? If, you're, if you do it perfectly on your first go without having any practice, I wanna come learn from you, right? Because I that didn't happen on my first go, and I know it didn't happen on a lot of people's first goes. So, with that amount of pressure and practice and paint, right, we can blend the sky, blend all those colors together until we like it, right? If you don't like it, how's anyone else gonna like it? How are you gonna expect them to go, oh, that's so cool, if you look at it and you go, hmm, that's kind of crap, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta like your own work. So work at it until you like how it looks. Say we want it a little bit darker up here. Let's get a little bit more of the blue, a little bit more of the crimson, just a couple swipes of each, right? Working a little bit more color, bringing it down, shrinking our little white area, right? Having it come down like this. All depends on what you want. You see the different, the swipes were all coming in at this angle out here. If I was coming in this way, I'd be coming at a different angle, right? I'm gonna have to work in, it's gonna be P-A-P-P. -P. What's the p, -p, 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 p of paint with Josh, right? Paint, angle, pressure, practice. That's what it should be. So if somebody could work in an acronym like PAPA, maybe we should, we should add another A. Then we could do paint, angle, pra pressure, practice. And what's the last A? Somebody come up with the last A. Give me the last A of paint with Josh. If we had one, if you were gonna be like, okay, Josh, 
I'm your manager. I'm taking over from DC. I'm your manager now. And the last A of Paint With Josh is attention. That's a good one. I like that. Who said that? Get up here. Attitude. It was a Ridgeback. Ridgeback Mama 83. I like that. I'm going to follow you. Let's see. Attitude. That's another good one. Acceptance. I like that one too. Miss Ma'am. I'm following you. Let's see. Appreciate. I like that. Action. Action. Those are good ones. All good, right? So it could be the papa of Paint With Josh. Then we're going to think we're talking about my dad, and that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> so maybe we'll just keep it as the three Ps. We'll just do the three Ps, all right? And all we're doing with those three Ps, the amount of paint on the brush, the amount of pressure on the canvas, and practice, of course, going to allow us to do a sky, clouds, mountains, trees, rivers, streams, waterfalls, big crashing waves, everything to do with painting. Three Ps. Don't ever forget them. Don't you ever forget where you learn the three Ps, who came up with the three Ps, your boy paint with Josh. That's who came up with the three Ps. And I am very proud of those three Ps. Very proud because you can literally do anything with them. So let's wash. The only thing you can't do with the three Ps is wash your brush. So let me show you how we wash the brushes, okay? I, my paint thinner or odorless mineral spirits, which looks just like this. Little can of clean strip odorless mineral spirits. Gallon can. You can get the can for like 17 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. Right, it's about here. I don't want it all the way to the tip top of my, my cup. And I don't want to dunk my entire brush into the thinner, right? Remember, it's down here. So it's gonna look like it's going all the way in. But in reality, if the level's here, my brush is only just barely, just barely the tip. And look how much comes out, just being inside just the tip of it, right? So that's why we shake it. That's why you have that little buffer of space in between so we can shake the bristles and they kind of spray out onto the cup. Now it's still very wet. So look, I'm shake it into a can. I'm gonna put my thinner down so I don't drop it or try to drink it, All right? And I'll bring out the old beater bucket. Now the beater bucket is a five gallon bucket and it has a golf ball basket down inside. And I'll tell you the quick story of the golf ball basket while we beat the devil out of this brush, All right? So when I very first started painting, I had, we had already spent tons of money getting all the brushes, getting all the paints, getting all everything. And I was like, do I really need another thing? I gotta go spend more money to clean the brush? Come on, I'll go out in the garage. I'll find myself, I don't know, this golf ball basket, for instance. Got some crisscrosses on the bottom. I should be able to beat the brush and keep, and then eventually I'll get whatever brush cleaning thing. You know, when I sell my first painting, I'll get the brush cleaning thing. <laughs> I've had that same bucket in there for four years now. Same golf ball basket. This is a cool looking sky, you guys, like lavender. So remember, if you're just tuning in, you can name this painting, right? So towards the end of the stream, we'll start coming up with names. And you can buy this painting, which is a lot of fun. Right? A lot of times, like, paintings get bought during the show. They're 40% off, free worldwide shipping. You can get it right now at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Okay, go over there. And this is the cool part. When it does get purchased, some of the times, the buyer will choose the name that you put forth in the comments for the painting and then give you a shout out, which is really cool. So we're going to take all that thick white paint, just like that, on the tip of the brush. And we're going to come up here and just make some clouds, just wherever you want. I like to save that little light area that we created back inside there, where we almost blended it all away, right? And just by mushing on these clouds, you get this gorgeous little thing happen, right? Just like that. That's all you need. And you guys are like, you're looking at this like, oh my God, I sat here and watched this guy for two minutes so he could make a cloud that looks like that. Oh, I'm out of here, right? Before you scroll away, take our one inch brush, right? You got to trust in the process. Take our one inch brush, we're gonna start making counterclockwise circles. Very soft, very small, sometimes larger. Watch, we'll come up here, oh, and then come down. All over the place, right? Sometimes touching, sometimes not. Sometimes pushing a little harder with our what? That second P. What's that second P of paint with Josh? I forget, you guys gotta tell me. What's that second P? I never, I always forget the second P. I'm gonna follow whoever says the second P. Right now, pressure by uh, Ryan Siegel. I see you, I'm following you, bam. The amount, amount of pressure, right, will allow us to blend all of this color away. Or if we're very light, we can keep it very nice and thick on the canvas and bright. Or we can take it and blend it and push it and move it. Bang. Ah, push it. Right? <laughs> Do a little salt and pepper action over here. Okay? All we're doing, blending the bottom so it sort of blends into the sky. Just crisscrossing back and forth. Checking our camera over there, looking to see what you guys see, because I see all this light. It's like so bright over here. So I think I like that. We just made, right, let's add one more. Let's add, what, what do you guys think? One more little cloud over here? Or should we just stay with the one cloud? I'm going to let the fans decide. 
We're gonna do we're gonna do a little sort of a poll, but just a, a real quick one. Should we do one more cloud or should we just leave it that soft little cloud out there? Let's see. We're looking, we're seeing all these follows. Do another. Keep it up, baby. Somebody says one, some says more. Only one, add more. There. Oh, we're kind of tied, guys. We're kind of tied. Another add, add, leave it. One, one, one more, more, one, more, 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 more. All right, it looks like more's got the winner. And I think it needs just one more little cloud, right? Just to add a little bit of depth. So we're going to take that little piece, little piece of white on the edge of the brush. We had our very bright white here, and then it started to blend down into this darkness, right? That's right where you want to hit your next bit of brightest white. Bam! Right in there. Helps push that other one back, brings this one closer, and then we're going to leave room for us to blend this one down the same way that we did that one, right? That's all you need. Just a little touch. Layers, 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 layers. Again, taking the same brush, haven't washed it, haven't touched it. Didn't even dab it off on a paper towel. It still has all the purple that we've been touching already. All right, so just based on our pressure, which we've already talked about, and the final P, the third P of Paint With Josh, does anybody know? Because you're going to get a follow from me and you're going to get a shout out if you know that third P. We're going to take it like that. And just like that, you get this really cool sky. Who knows the third P? Practice. I see it. Looks like Dylan Slaps was the first one to say it. You get the follow, buddy. Dylan Slaps knows we need practice, right, guys? This is my 727th painting. 727, which is a lot, if you ask me. Okay, without getting burnt out. So, 727 gosh dang paintings. And I gotta tell you, without practicing, they don't all come out good, right? Sometimes if you leave for a while, you don't paint, and then you come back, you think you knew everything, right? Come back, you find out real quick that uh, you gotta practice to keep it up. It's just like, uh, just like the game of golf, right? You know, everybody knows how to swing the club. But man, if you don't go out there and play every so often, you forget. You forget the stuff that you need to do. You forget how hard you gotta push to make your circles. You forget how much paint you have to put on. You forget, right? So get out there, get your practice in. Go hit the driving range by painting a, a, a painting, right? All right, tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? I almost dropped this cup. If I would have done one more, <laughs> if I would have done like a third thing, I would have dropped this cup. So tell me where you're watching from. I'm gonna come back here and give out some shout outs here. Uh, we're painting in oils. Ooh, a pterodactyl, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Let's see, Jersey Mike's grilled cheese. I, I'd love a Jersey Mike sandwich too. Colorado, Ohio, Illinois, Ohio, New York. Uh, let's see, Oregon, California, Fresno, Melbourne, Australia, Detroit, Michigan, New York, Las Vegas. Hey, Raquel, I'm gonna follow you. Raquel, don't leave me, don't leave me, girl. Where are you at? Don't leave, oh, she, she's rocking it up there so fast. Okay, I'm also from Las Vegas, so that's very cool. It's hard to, to meet people, you know what I mean? Like to even have any followers that are in Las Vegas, so. I have tons of fans everywhere else. California, Arizona, Wisconsin, Big Island of Hawaii. Do you know my friend Dan? He lives over on the Big Island. Let's see, love painting with metallic paints. That's really cool. I see you guys favoriting the shop. Thank you. Venezuela, South African, Spokane. I lived in Spokane when I was five. You know what happened to me? I learned to ride my bike in Spokane, right? I'm gonna tell you a quick story. And when you're learning to ride a bike and your stepdad is behind you and he's holding on to the seat of the bike and running along. It's like the most awkward run. I've, I had to do it when I taught my daughter how to, how to ride her bike, right? And it totally brought back memories. So I'm in my head, stepdad's behind me, I'm cruising along on my bike, and then all of a sudden I look back and he's not there anymore and I just, doo -doo 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 -poof, and it was in the, it was like Christmas day or something. I bit through my tongue, like blood, I was five, oh, I thought I was dead. I thought it was, it was bad, it was bad. That's my one memory of Spokane, Washington was me biting through my tongue, learning to ride my bike and slipping and eating it. And like, for whatever reason, maybe I thought it was Jordan. I was like, ah, I, I bit, bit right through my tongue. Luckily, it stayed attached. Luckily. Luckily, luckily. Stayed attached. Okay, so we got our clouds. Now here comes the fun part, right? You remember all those colors that we put underneath? I don't know if you can really see them through the... You kind of can, I guess. You can see the little bit there. You can see a little bit. So we've taken our, our blue color, put it underneath, then we have our crimson, right? Because we're only using a limited color palette today. Then we have blue and crimson mixed in underneath. So it's gonna be like a purpley sort of sand that should match our color above. Now this is the coolest technique when you're painting for like your family or your friends. You're okay guys, we're just gonna grab some white paint. That's all we're gonna do. 
and then you go up and you touch the canvas and you don't show them beforehand that you put down these dark colors because they're very hard to see in, uh, in real life, right? When we have all these super bright lights, it's easy for you guys to see. But in real life, it's sort of difficult to see. So you go, okay, guys, come in with my white, check out this cool trick. And you come back here and you go, okay, I'm going to start painting. And you start pulling out our little bits of white and it starts turning blue. And they're like, where did that blue come from? How, what, what magic and sorcery is this? This is some nonsense, right? Just a little bit of blue because it's blending with that, that blue paint that we put underneath there, right? All we're doing, coming up to our original line. Don't want to put too much white on there because it'll cover up all of our blue, right? So we're going to take our one-inch brush and come back here very softly, about as straight as we can get it, right? Pulling it to the side, softening it out. Not trying to blend it so much that we ruin all these little dark areas and light areas and little differences, right? Got to have those little differences. And maybe we put a little bit too much white on the back. So let's come back here with our darkest blue. Well, our only blue that we have on the canvas, right? Make our little horizon line back here again. Just darken it up. All right, come in if I had it a little bit different in certain areas, it's gonna look a little bit cooler, right? A little darker, a little light, get these little humps. And that's what makes it look neat to me anyway. To me, is that little bit of dark light, dark light, dark light all the way down. Okay, now we've come up, we have our dark separation, right? We've reached the end of our blue color. Now we have a blank section of black and then we have our crimson. You gotta have that little separator back there. It really helps for the shadow, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I've been doing this for four years now, 727 paintings. And this one was the hardest thing to get when I very first started. I, I was like, why don't my waves look like Bob's? You know what I mean? You're probably asking yourself, why don't my waves look like Josh's waves, right? It's because you have to keep that little dark separator, right? The dark separator, <laughs> like Sade. Okay, you got to keep Sade back here. Is it Sade or was that a different, is that black velvet I'm thinking about? No, Black Velvet was like Anita. No. Now I'm confused. Guys, Smooth Operator is Sade, right? Am I right? Somebody tell me I'm right. Somebody tell me I'm right, please. No, not Shade. Sade. It's S-A-D-A, -A, but you have to put the silent H. Yes, right there. It's Sade. <laughs> Sade, right? There. Okay, good. Then I know what I'm talking about. No, no, I'm not talking out of school. Is it Sade or Shania Twain? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, let's come up here. We're going to grab our palette up again. And we're going to come back in. We're going to get this little bit of white because, again, that's all we're using, right? And your friends are going, you're a, you're a magician. You're a warlock. You're a, you're a witch and wizard, Harry. Harry, you're a wizard, Harry. No, we just didn't show them that we put these undercolors on in the beginning, right? Now, in order to help push our bit of ocean back, what do we have to do? Like we did with this cloud, we put another cloud in front of it. So what are we going to do with this bit of wave? We're going to put another bit of wave in front of it. So... Keeping our dark separation line. Let's say we came up like this. Bang, just like that, right? That's gonna be the top of our water. And it's a little leading line. We're gonna come all the way back like this. Look, oh, look at it change into the crimson. Is it? Oh, guys, that's gonna be cool, right? Now, all we're doing, same brush. We come over here and we're gonna pretend our wave's going down like that. So instead of grabbing at the tip, we're gonna grab right over there and just start making little curls, little pulls. Nothing too crazy, right? Nothing too nutso. Now we're gonna rotate the brush, right? At a different angle, grab, pull off that way, right? Now our wave is gonna look like it's got one side crashing before the other side. And these little, vi these little uh, directional pulls are so vital. And the little curl that you have with it, everything that you have there, it's curling more here than it is back here. It's already hit back here, right? We don't have to add a whole lot of detail off the back side of that wave. And if you do want to add just a little bit of brightness, because the more white that we add, remember, we don't have many colors. So the more white that we add, the brighter everything's going to be. And what do we have to have in order to maintain those shadowy spots? We got to have that deep darkness, right? And if you cover up all the darkness, you're going to be mad at yourself. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at yourself for covering up all the darkness, okay? Now we're going to come back in here. Right, if that's the edge of our wave, our eye is going to be in here. So we'll just light up a little bit. Oh, look at it change from the blue to the crimson right there. It's going to be the most gorgeous pink face of a, of a wave you've ever seen. We're going to come in here, load up a little bit of paint, just making it a little, a little like, a, like an old axe, right? If we were to have this at the end of an axe handle, coming down, chopping some wood. Because it's got to be like a, just a chiseled edge, right? So we're going to come back here. 
and just gonna feed it back. But I don't want this color to touch that light blue, right? We gotta leave our Sade in there, right? Gotta leave our dark separator. So just like this, we're gonna come in and we're gonna slide it back and slide it back. Don't let those areas touch. I'm telling you, don't do it, right? I'm gonna come in here and the more that we come to the right, the more sideways our, our swipes are. See how we're going like this? We started out up here at this angle, like one o'clock. Then by the time we get over here, we're almost at, at three o'clock, like 245, right? All depends on the angle, right? That angle is vital as well. We don't talk about the angle as much because the three Ps are so important, right? But that angle, without the right angle, your brain, your eyeball doesn't like it. It goes, what the heck is wrong with this thing? Something is off and I don't like it, right? Gorgeous, don't wanna to add too much color because look at all that crimson. The more white that we add, the more that crimson is gonna disappear, right? So if we want just a couple little white highlights, little bits on the top, little bits where the, the light might've come down struck a little bit more. Just a few little things. Don't make it too bright though. And look at that last bit of darkness back there. That's really cool. Now, in order to make it look like there's another little wave on top, why don't we get a smaller brush and we'll come in here right on the edge of that. Just back there, there we go. All right, taking this guy. Again, sliding it back, because all we're really worried about is what the, the right side of the water looks like. All the left side is gonna be covered by spray and stuff like that. All right, so just very softly. Don't pull it all the way over to the tip. We're never gonna see the entire thing all the way to the tip, the highest point of that wave, right? Never gonna see everything back there. So don't worry about it. I like to have mine go a little bit like on a, like a little mustache, you guys know me. Little mustachio bashio right there. A little higher point to him. And then that gives us an area that we can flick back. We can leave a little bit more exposed at that little peak. Shave it back. You get that little, see that darkness back there? Looks like the lip of that water that's about to come over the side. Let's not forget about our cool little eye of our wave. Take a clean, dry one inch brush, just because I'm too lazy to go wash the other one, right? Take a clean, dry one. I'm gonna come over here. And just so lightly, now look, we had our dark separator and then some colors, so what do we leave next? What's this called again? I just said it. Who's gonna be the first one? You're getting a follow from Paint With Josh. I gotta sit down. Oh, I got my stool back here. Who's gonna say the two words by Sade that I wanna hear? I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you. The dark separator. There it was. Bing. Oh, Ryan, I'm already following you. Cool, I don't have to do anything. Excellent, the dark separator, right? That's what you wanna do, leave that bit. So as we're mixing and pushing this, and blending it out, very soft little bits of circles, what are we leaving? That dark separator. So as we come up here, you can even take the brush and push it. Push it up there, get it as small as possible, but leave it in there, dang it, because if you don't, you're gonna miss it. You're really gonna miss it, right? And look, have a little bit more pressure. Oh, look at that crimsony, pinky color, you guys. My goodness, that is gorgeous. Remember, look, dark separator all the way around this whole thing. That's what you need. That's the key, that's the key. All right, now we're gonna come in, we're gonna grab one more little brush and we need to make up a little bit of color. So we need to mix it on the brush if you don't have a palette knife or People ask me all the time, they go, what's that tool you have? Where can I get one? It's called a palette knife. It's uh, specifically shaped like this. There's all sorts of different palette knives. This is the shape that I prefer. Looks a lot like that. And it's good for building houses. Watch, you can go like this. Let's see if I can do one right here. Oh no, we're messing it all up, Josh. There we go, go like that, like this, right? It's all the, the perfect pitch. Everything you need is built into these little angles of the blades, right? And of course, it's hard to do it on a little palette in front of everybody. So all we need to do is mix up a bit of that dark color, our, our three favorite colors, right? Our Prussian blue, our blank blank. What is this color called, guys? What's this color called right here? We got Prussian blue, midnight black, and what crimson? Does anybody know the actual color that Bob used? What crimson? Oh, and it's not red. Yeah, it is crimson, but what's the color? What's the color though, the original name? There's a name, you guys keep saying crimson. You guys keep saying yeah, magenta, no, no. There it is, Detective Potty. Alizarin Crimson, you get the follow from Paint With Josh. Bob called it Alizarin Crimson, right? A-L-I-Z-A-R-I-N, something like that. Alizarin Crimson, wanted to trick you up, right? We can't just be following everybody that answers a question, so we gotta give you the hard questions. 
alizarin and crimson makes up this gorgeous purpley color that we used, right? We've only used these, these colors for everything that we've done so far. So only makes sense that we use all three of those to make our shadow, right? So we'll come in here, we're gonna get all this color up just onto the corners of the brush mainly, right? You wanna have an area in the center that's a little bit higher. So you got a little bit more paint down here, a little bit more paint down here, a little bit higher in the top. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? There's more paint over here, our high spaces on this side for whatever reason. All right, I'm gonna take all that goopiness. We're gonna come up, we're gonna stay underneath our, our color, right? Sometimes creating that dark separator if you need to, right? If you went over yours and it's too bright and you've lost the darkness, just come under there, a couple taps. Now watch, we're gonna start smushing it. And that way it goes up and it smacks into that white and starts to cover some of those areas. But we don't wanna cover all the bits of white, right? Leaving a few little streaks of that original black canvas that are in there where our brush didn't come down is all you need. Now we're gonna come up, I love coming up above the horizon, up into the sky. Back over our wave, you don't have to see every piece of the wave that you painted, you gotta hide a little bit of it, right? And it's gonna look a little bit, uh, a little bit better once we light up this thing with a bit of our highlight color. All right, now that's gonna be the fun part. There we go. And again, you gotta get a little of that darkness and then we're gonna grab a small little liner brush, teeny tiny little things. We're gonna go back and around, like there's a tennis ball in here that we have to go around and miss, right? All on our angles. We move the ball, but the angle stays the same, right? Imagine there's a little circle right here. Let's see, where's Bob? Come here, Bob. You're gonna make an appearance. Not to help me or my career or anything, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it, but everybody knows what I'm holding. He comes with a little yellow base. You can pretend that little yellow base is your, your little tennis ball, right? Just go around, back and around it. Over here, we do the same thing. Go around, go around, go around. Same, same thing. Don't just because you're coming in here, go straight down or to the side or at a different angle. Pretend you got that little bit of a ball back in here and you're going back before you come down and then lining up, right? A couple little things right over that brightest point. Just like that. A couple little veins in our eye. I love that. Cool little thing. Thank you, Mr. Bobblehead, Mr. Curly-Headed Bobblehead for your help. I don't even want to say his name anymore, just to, just to, just to make the blank, blank, blanks angry. We, if you've been watching me long enough, you know who I'm talking about when I talk about the blank, blank, blanks, because I am not one of them, and that makes him very mad that I didn't have to pay and do the certification course. I taught myself how to do it, and I have the biggest following out of any of them, all put together. Not that I want to toot my own horn or nothing, but yeah, they don't like me. So the blank, blank, blanks. I don't even know why I started bringing them up. What are, oh, oh yeah, because I use Bob. They don't like it when I use Bob, right? I, I didn't pay the thing. I don't get to use Bob's likeness, so I don't even want to say his name anymore just to give them less to about, right? Like all they do is complain. Instead of being happy for an artist, who teaches in the same style and who's keeping Bob's memory alive and who's reaching more people than any of them all put together. Instead of being happy for that person, they want to hate on me. Do you, have you heard of Paint with John? He's this, he's this, ba, 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 ba. Get a job. Get a job. Get some clients. How about that? All right, let's do this. We're going to come in here before we start a... Uh, a war. <laughs> Let's come in here. I got I got nothing but love for everybody, by the way. They're the ones that attack me. They attack me and they try to get, you know, people to come after me for doing something that anybody can do. I taught myself how to paint. I'm sorry. I use Bob's products. I bring awareness to the Bob brand, even though people don't like it, right? But most people don't even like the brand because they've seen the, the freaking documentary. But I have so much of this paint that I'm not just going to throw it away, right? That doesn't make any sense. But Let's stop talking about the blank, blank, blanks before they get mad. All right, we're gonna come in here with our white and it's gonna make me mad. We're gonna come in here with our white paint. If, has everyone left? It seems like we always, no, it's about the same. It seems like we always, uh, we always get either more people, like a surge of people, because the blank, blank, blanks know we're talking about them, or, uh, or people dip out because they don't want to hear me, you know, complain and moan. So we're gonna come in here with our white paint. And this is where the fun part comes in, right? I come in here side to side. Every so often I got to vent and you guys got to be here to listen. Side to side, just like that. Look at that gorgeous purple color. Oh, that's fantastic, right? This is about the middle of our foam, right? I like to come down a little bit more to, to create the front of the foam, right? We'll come back here. And then the back of the foam is the most fun. 
All right, just like that. We've got our front area and then back in here, we're gonna start, remember if we had our little, our little helper over here or a tennis ball and we start to go up, like we're gonna come up and meet up with those little dark lines coming down. See that angle right there? I'm trying to get my hand out of the way enough to show you that if you were to put a tennis ball there or something circular there, right? You'd be able to go around it. And these little flicks gotta line up with whatever those little flicks are doing or wherever they would have been doing, right? Now again, as we go over here, we go more to the side and a little bit longer, and then we can connect these two sections. It's gonna be really cool, right? Now, as we get closer into here, why don't we finish this foam and I'll show you what we're talking about, how we have to leave this area dark. Okay, so let's wash that brush off and get rid of this old brush. And come over here, gonna reuse the same brush and go back into our liquid white though, right? The liquid white is a very goopy, wet paint. And that's what we put our initial uh, sky on in order to keep it nice and wet so all of our colors would blend together, right? This allows this thick white paint to become very runny and liquidy and then attach itself more easily to the canvas, okay? So again, we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna start tapping, just dropping little things, right? Little taps and it starts to come alive. We're gonna crest over the top of the wave, right? Pushing the, the tip top of our wave back just a little bit, a couple inches, right? And then we're gonna ride these shadows that we created all the way down till poof, we come down, we're gonna hit the ground right about there. And again, all this paint's gonna move when we hit it with our brush. So leave some room, right? We're gonna come in, we're gonna dab, leaving dark areas, leaving light areas. Doesn't have to be the most perfect little shape because what are we gonna do? We're gonna make a cloud out of it. All this stuff back here, same thing, just a little bit more liquidy paint. And we're gonna be talking about the second P. So who's got the second P for paint with Josh? Because I'm about to really work that second P. So anybody that's got it, I'm about to look right now. And if you tell me, I'm gonna follow you. I'd be the first one, let's see. Let's see, pressure, I think I'm already following. Oh, wait, 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 G. That's G-T-B-M-E-R, Gordon. I'm gonna give you a follow. Oh, it looks like you gotta uh, approve my follow, so that's kinda, that's kinda crappy, but pressure, that's right. With the right amount of pressure, we're gonna mix this whole thing into a little cloud. Are you ready? So we're gonna take our brush, same brush. Haven't done anything, haven't washed this one inch brush in a while. We're gonna come up here into the top first. Little circles, very light, very light, right? That stuff will really wanna disappear fast. And sometimes I like leaving little areas of the, the our little watery cloud untouched, right? So it looks like there's some splash, some extra brightness, some sort of detail, some sort of something, all based on our pressure. And look just how lightly we gotta to touch this stuff because it wants to blend away so quickly and move. Oh my goodness, it wants to move. This, this stuff would go all the way over to the side of the canvas so I really let it, right? And as we come up here, we start talking softer. We start doing it very quietly, very softly. Oh my God, like three hairs. Uh, Bob wasn't kidding when he said that, three hairs and some air. He was not joking, dude. Like literally you're using th th maybe five, maybe five to 10 hairs at the very end of the brush is all we're trying to get. Not touching the top, right? Leaving some of those watery details as they're falling down. Little things, oh geez, the smallest little touches, right? Uh, until it looks right to you. It's everyone's gonna look a little bit different. That's the best part. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different. There we go, just like that. Oh, you get that little bit. It's crackling, it's rolling, it's splashing, it's coming down. It looks like it needs just a little, oh yeah, a little bit brighter, a little bit more. Oh, there we go, guys. Just riding that wave. Fantastic. Don't wanna cover up all of my dark color though, right? That's our money maker, that dark separator. Can't have all this color be on top of all that color without any bit of darkness in between. That looks cool. Man, that looks neat. And every so often, you can come back, you can sneak in a bit of that shadow if you need to. Just don't come down too far into that darkness. Oh man, that's it, that's right there, that's it. That's all you need, okay? Now we're gonna come back, we gotta get rid of this liquid white. We should have done a little wave splash before, but it is what it is. Now we're gonna pull out some fresh, titanium white and go through all of that right here onto the brush. I'm gonna continue our little rounded curves like there's that little ball in here, right? And as we go up, we go back and then we start to curve up. Matching up with those little lines back there, right? Leaving our area very dark. And then we're very lightly gonna start working it closer and closer into the eye, maybe coming up a little bit and touching. Almost, right? Don't want to go too bright there. We're going to have to blend that guy down. 
That was a little bit too much pressure. Too much length, right? Here we go. Back into these guys now. Very lightly, leaving this very dark area back in here as our water starts to rotate its way up. Such a light little touch back there. Even the smallest little thing can be too much, right? And that guy, just by pushing him out, changing his angle, adding a little bit more on the sides, bang, you change the whole thing. There we go. Now, right here, we're gonna grab the base. We're gonna come down, brightening up his whole bit of foam. Just like that. This guy's fun up here too. You can literally come down like our same little mustache, right? We come down like this. Wrap it around, get your wave to come around. And now all this is part of that same bit of water. Wicked. Gosh, I love that thing. It's so cool how you can just mess around, right? Take it very softly because you don't want to pull it. You don't want to ruin all the details. You want to drag this guy over the smallest bit like he's coming around and just, again, like there's a little ball right there, right? A little circular action. It's got some teeth. And then what do we do? We go in, we make it soft. Stretching those guys up just a little bit more. Blending our colors together. And pulling our angles in the correct angle, right? Where these two bits meet is vital. You can't have them be a skew, right? You don't want one to be going one way and one to be going the other way. They both have to be going the way that they're supposed to be. Otherwise, it's just not gonna look bright to our eyeball, right? Very cool. I love how the water comes over here. It looks like it's a little shadowy. It looks like there's a, you could do whatever. You could put a rock right here. You could do whatever you wanna do. So neat. And then we're gonna have this purpley sandy beach. It's gonna be wicked. Oh, it's gonna be wicked. All right, I'm gonna take a little of this color just back here though. I don't want to do too much over there. A little bit back here. I'm gonna grab our two inch brush. Really give it some pressure, pull it down a bit. Swipe it over back into the wave, right? You create that little bit of sandy, watery, little bit of action, little mistiness. Oh God, that's so cool. That is cool. All right, now we're gonna come in one more time. We're gonna wash this brush off. Almost done guys. There's not a lot of steps left for a seascape from here very purpley little seascape. This one's gorgeous. I wonder if it's sold. I, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm filming another tutorial for it, so I don't even know if it's sold, if it didn't sell. So we're going to take our white, right? And let's add, I don't know, we'll add a little bit of the crimson to it just because I don't want it to be like too bright white down there. We'll have this like pinky purplish beach, right? We're going to come about a quarter inch underneath our light lavender foam and we're going to just bring it down, right? Bring it down, bring it down. The Chinatown. Now, keeping our what? What is this called back here, guys? Has anybody been paying attention? What's that little dark line called? Because I'm going to give you a follow if you know it, and I'm not already following you. What's that dark line called? Oh, the clouds are fantastic in this one. Thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate it. The dark separator. That's right. Trey O'Donnell. Where are we at? The dark separator. You got to keep that right there. Otherwise, you're gonna miss it. You really will. All your color will blend in. You won't be able to tell the difference between the beach or the foam and the, and the beach or the wet sand. Pulling it down firm, 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 firm. And this is the biggest mistake I see beginners make. You guys see it in my videos all the time. I say, this is the biggest mistake I see beginners make. They leave the sand, they go, yep, that's done. All right, let's finish it. No, that looks like it's gonna cut my feet up if I go walking out there. That looks sharp. I don't want to go walk on that. That's Aurora Borealis. If we were to flip the canvas upside down, that's an Aurora right there, right? So look at the difference. If we take this little bit and we swipe it out, just gonna do half, right? Look at the difference from here to here. Wet sand, Aurora Borealis, not the same, right? So swipe those guys, make those vertical strokes, long horizontal strokes, and then you get your wet sandy beach. And if you did your job well enough, what do you retain? Your dark separator, which you can then feed back and make it as small as you want, right? Feeding the color up into it, and up into our waves. Bam, you don't even need to add anything to this one. It's fantastic the way it is. Just fantastic. Only OGs can do it with a two inch brush, by the way. So practice up, practice up people. Bang, very cool. Look at that dark line. I'm not even gonna add any water lines or anything. Look at these details just from the brush. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to add anything. We didn't have to touch it with our, our palette knife or do anything, right? The hard bits. A lot of people complain that with, you know, using the palette knife is more difficult. 
and I, we wish we wouldn't use the palette knife. So there you go. If you did your job well enough, you get a little dark separator and our sandy little lavender beach. It's very cool. And if there's areas where you think you missed out, you can go back in and put a little bit of it back in there, right? Just a little bit of the darkness, because what are we going to do? We're going to stretch it. We're going to pull it and we're going to leave little bits. There we go, as it's going back into the foam. Oh, I don't want to mess up too many details. It's so gorgeous. So fantastic. Just fantastic. Gonna get a little bit more of that since we covered that up with some dark color. I really like that pink color there. Little swipe, retained our dark separator. Gorgeous little bit of wave. I really like this one, guys. All right, now we're gonna come in with our final little bits and we'll probably put the old palette down. So start coming up with a name, guys. I don't know if this one's been sold or not, but uh, start coming up with your names. And if it has been sold, maybe the buyer will choose your name. And if not, then I'll get to choose the name. So we're gonna come over here with a lot of liquid white on the tip top of our wave. And this is our little watery highlights, right? And they really stand out. We come over here off the backside, turning the brush sometimes, rotating it if you have to, letting it blend away almost all the way to the back. There we go. Don't need to see all the detail back there anyway. No one's looking right there. They're looking right here. This, the teeth, the jaws of the ocean is where they're looking. If you have any little bit of extra brightness on there, you can take it, roll through our foam and everything, go back, add a couple little light gray highlights, little bits of white, little things that are going to go down and line up with our bit of uh, foam happening from the bottom, right? Now we're going to wipe that off, come back in with a fresh bit of liquid white, grab into our little bit of foam in here. I want to have more than that. This one's very like textury and, and wet, so... There we go. I never like it to be just a perfectly straight line. Wrap that sucker around like that. Help it, feed it, feed it, and then come back and make it very soft, right? That liquid white wants to blend away so fast. So do too much and you're gonna be mad. Let that little bit of line in there, bang, just like that, just helps it rotate its way over and come down. So cool, so cool. All right, let's wash that brush off. Probably not gonna use that anymore. And let's sign this old guy. We'll finish the tutorial and then we'll see if anybody bought it and, uh, and see what we're gonna name it. And that's gonna be the fun part. I like to take the little bit, little smallest bit of our liquid white water line and uh, kind of blend it in right there where it matches and touches up with our bit of splash at the beginning. And this guy, He's got a thick old water line up here. Very cool. Okay. Just like that. I'm even gonna take this guy and tap up a little bit on him just to create a few little bits of kind of tumultuous splash over the edge. Take our little bit of liquid white and just tap it in. Just tap, tap, tappy. Oh, that looks cool. Like it's coming over real hard at that spot right there. So let's clean these guys off. Remember, come up with a name. What would you name this painting? And let's finish this tutorial real quick. And let's sign this guy over here today. Like that. Excellent. And of course, we got to add the family. I can already I can feel everybody in the comments go, what about the birds? What about the birds? I know, I know, I know. Let's go over here. Now, these birds aren't just regular old seabirds. They represent myself, London, and our gorgeous daughter, Bailey, and they go into every single painting as part of the signature. So it helps if you have a little bit of our odorless mineral spirits on your brush. Helps them come off the brush easier. Oh, yeah, nice and sharp. And it helps erase them if you didn't like them, right? You could go across it with your brush, and if you have enough of that thinner mixed in with the uh, paint that's there, it'll blend itself away. You want to see what I'm talking about? Do you not believe me and you want to see? Watch this. Couple swipes. Poof! It's like they were never there before, right? And that's because we took our, our thinner. Our paint is very thin. It comes off the brush very easily, right? And that way it'll blend away very easily if there's something about your little bird you don't like. We can go back to the same spot. Pop them in like that. There's me, there's London, and there's Bailey. Into every single painting as part of the signature. All right. You know what we're gonna put in this one too? Just because I always say, every time I really like a sky, 
Anytime I really love this guy, I feel like we gotta add London's mom to it because I miss her so much. And this just helps me when I when I look back and scroll through my photos in my uh, in my phone and stuff, and I see ones like this, it just reminds me of mom. So soft little contrail out there in the distance, man. Just like that. All right, guys. Well, uh, this one turned out fantastic. I'm so happy you chose to watch it. I can't wait to see your version. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. Epa -pa!